so we're going to go ahead and get started. Hopefully, we'll be able to resolve the technical difficulties with Grant. If necessary, we might move him to later in the session uh, if we can't. Uh, but my name is uh, Dan Gretsch, and thank you guys so much for joining me. Um, before uh, we get started with our formal presentation, I, I wanted to take a minute um, and talk about Blackout Tuesday. Um, you know, many of you are aware uh, that uh, the music industry started um, a uh, movement uh, yesterday called Hashtag Blackout Tuesday related to um, supporting uh, many of the protests related to police violence. Uh, it came out of the music industry and it spread to many other industries. Um, and uh, I know uh, BizHack, for one, uh, remained silent on social media yesterday. Uh, to give room for the voices of those who uh, are oppressed and aggrieved uh, to, to have the space to talk about what they're experiencing. Um, it is an extraordinary moment we're living in right now, and I wanted to acknowledge it. Um, Instagram, which is the topic of today's presentation, plays a big part uh, in both the opportunity and the oppression. Um, that a lot of folks uh, are, are, um, are, are uh, movement and movements against. And, um, you know, the power structures uh, that Facebook, which owns Instagram, Twitter, which is, you know, clashing right now with the president, um, inevitably social media and advertising and digital marketing has taken on and takes on uh, a political bent. BizHack's point of view in all of this is we are empowers and enablers of small business. And by virtue of the fact that we're based in Miami, that we do reach an international audience and a little bit more about that later, uh, the majority of our constituents are people of color. Uh, more than half of the people in our current five-week course uh, are Black and African American. And this is a point of real pride. Um, what we attempt to do at BizHack is to empower and enable small businesses to take their marketing into their own hands to give them the power to grow and to use these tools that are made available to them to allow for that. And so... Um, our mission is to bring 21st century marketing tools to the modern small business to allow them to thrive. And in that way, uh, do our small part to try to restore uh, economic justice and equality in this country. So um, I think all of us are shaken and moved by what's going on, the convulsions in our country right now. Uh, and we are mission driven um, to support small businesses in this moment of challenge and, and peril, but also of opportunity. Um, so, so thank you guys for, you know, being a part of, uh, you know, the BizHack story. Um, and thank you so much for your support uh, coming here today so that we can talk um, about uh, Instagram uh, to all of you. Um, so I wanted to start by, as I always do, uh, talk a little bit about um, some of the exciting things that we have coming up. Um, so I'm going to share my screen now. Um, this is our 11th uh, BizHack Live. We started this uh, right at the sort of start of the pandemic. And um, we've been going strong now for 11 sessions. I'm very proud of all that we've done and we've accomplished. And, and I'm really excited for the lineup that we have today and what's coming up next. So today we're going to hear from Giovanni and Signares. Uh, Gio, Gio is a dear friend of BizHacks. He has been um, uh, our lead instructor for many of our uh, courses, and he is our first ever master instructor, certified master instructor. Uh, so Gio is going to talk about Instagram advertising, specifically Instagram stories advertising. Um, next week is a, a really special session. Um, I realized that in 11 sessions, I've never actually had a chance to do my giving back and my instructing to the community. Um, I have a 90 minute training that I run. Uh, I usually charge uh, $150 for it. 
um, and I've done it around the country for groups around the country, and I'm very excited to be offering it to the community for free. Uh, it'll be from 12:30 to 2 next week. It's called the Five Pillars of Digital Success for Small Businesses. Uh, I really encourage you to come to this. Uh, this is a training that we normally charge for, but you know, in this moment, uh, we feel really compelled and want to share what the best practices that we have. It's also a taste of the course, uh, the five week course that we offer. Um, and so if you're wondering whether that course is a fit for you, um, coming to this session, the style of teaching and the approach we take might help give you a sense that yeah, this is something you wanna do. Uh, the week after that, we have our first ever uh, accelerated course graduation party. We've actually held one graduation online. So this isn't our first online graduation. Uh, we did it for our last cohort. Uh, but we're going to be celebrating uh, the 30 amazing businesses that have gone through our accelerated program and we're going to have uh, half a dozen case studies from them and how they're using digital marketing during COVID-19. You know, please join us for that for a, uh, a real uh, dose of um, inspiration and uh, a lot of learning. Uh, that'll be in two weeks and then uh, in three weeks uh, we're going to have the amazing Jennifer Hudson talking about <coughs> where to pivot values. So I look forward to um, having you guys for all of those. Um, and I wanted to then welcome two uh, amazing BizHack partners uh, who are really helping bring the work that we're doing to small businesses and are themselves doing a lot of work with small businesses. Uh, first, I want to um, uh, acknowledge Joel and Kevin from ScreenCo. Um, everybody who is here uh, from ScreenCo, if you guys could jump in the chat uh, and say hey to Joel and Kevin. Um, last we checked, we had uh, more than 30 people uh, from their friends and family network who were joining here today. I can't uh, tell you how much I appreciate that. Uh, Joel and Kevin uh, are both uh, alumni of the BizHack program, and uh, they are extraordinary marketers. They run a full stack agency. Uh, that does social media management, Facebook and Google ads, website design, and then marketplace sales and logistics. And their real specialty is Latin American e-commerce marketplaces that essentially compete with and complement Amazon, such as Mercado Libre, Linio, and Falabella, Falabella. So if you're interested in reaching a Latin American market with a product or service through e-commerce, uh, they give you access to other market places that um, uh, compete with and complement Amazon and are a key part of your strategies down there. So I just want to say, you know, thank you, uh, Joel and Kevin, for all your support. And uh, I'm very excited. This is BizHack's first international partnership uh, to bring our training to the Latin American market. So thank you guys very much. And um, Joel or Kevin, did you want to say a quick word? Thank you, Dan, for inviting us. It's a, a privilege and an, uh, an honor to work alongside you and uh, expand this amazing effort you, you've done here in, in the U.S. to uh, other people in other countries, which uh, Joel and I have personally been a part of, of the course. And yeah, it's definitely an amazing uh, effort that you're doing, and I'm sure it's going to be... Uh, um, a great opportunity for, for more people to, to join not only the course, but also the group that, uh, that you've uh, been building. Yeah. Well, thank you. You know, Joel and Kevin are part of, you know, the incredibly vibrant uh, community of Venezuelan um, expats, uh, exiles, uh, immigrants, um, you know, who are bringing incredible vitality and richness to our community. Um, I went to, um, one of my favorite stories, I went to Kevin's wedding. Uh, it's actually the first wedding I've ever attended of a BizHack uh, graduate. And um, it was the largest wedding I've ever attended. There were like 500 people there. And I'm like, you just got here like three years ago. How do you know so many people? You have a bigger wedding than I did. And I've been here my whole life. And uh, Kevin was saying like basically the Caracas community that he lived in has been, you know, transplanted um, to, uh, to Aventura and, and, and that is the richness that we have brought in um, and the, and the um, 
good fortune we have as a country to be able to take uh, to, to be able to host such amazing talent. Um, of course, it's on the back of great great strife and tragedy in Venezuela, a country uh, I know well. So, you know, well, you know, thank you guys for helping me bring uh, BizHack to Latin America, and I'm really looking forward to working with you. Um, and I hope uh, Grant uh, is back, uh, but I wanted to welcome Grant Miller uh, of Miami's Community Newspapers. Um, Miami's Community Newspapers is one of the pillars uh, of the journalism community, uh, and the Miller brothers uh, are two of the um, most important uh, journalistic uh, influences, um, particularly when it comes to small businesses uh, in the in the in the county. Um, you know, uh, Grant, who is a, a, a huge personality, hosts. Uh, a live stream show. Uh, you can see he's wearing, uh, that's a hot dog hat. Um, and uh, they have an on-air uh, YouTube show with a protective glass between them uh, that they're putting out. And they're doing incredible work right now with the small business community. Um, and uh, wanted to give Grant uh, a, a minute uh, to, uh, to, to talk, but I, I can see that he's no longer uh, on the call. Um, so what we'll do is we will um, bring him back, hopefully, uh, towards the end to talk about the work the community, Miami's community newspapers are doing with the uh, South Florida um, business community. And uh, he was on, and I, I don't see him on anymore. So uh, hopefully he, we'll get him back. Um, without further ado, uh, well, I did want to just say, you know, those of you who don't know me, my name is Dan Gretsch. I'm the founder of BizHack. We're an academy dedicated to doing advanced digital marketing training for small businesses, really helping them use lead generation techniques to find customers online. And um, we've helped, uh, at this point, thousands of businesses around the country um, figure out how to communicate effectively with their customers. Uh, and we're really proud of the work we do and, and looking to expand our influence and, and the number of businesses we impact every day. Um, we have at the end of today a big announcement re regarding our five-week program. So I really encourage you to stick around uh, for the entirety of this presentation. Um, Giovanni and Signares uh, is going to be talking about Instagram stories, and uh, we're going to take your questions, and then uh, I'll make the big announcement um, at the end uh, of the talk. Uh, and so without further ado, I wanted to uh, welcome my good friend uh, Giovanni. Um, Gio is going to talk about uh, three things today. Um, he's going to talk specifically about uh, Instagram stories ads and how they can provide customers new opportunities to reach potential clients. Instagram stories ads are a, uh, a type of ad that uh, it's a very specific kind of placement. Um, and there are very specific approaches that you should make if you're going to run an ad that you want to appear on stories starting with the fact that it should be vertical video. Um, he's gonna give you tips and tricks to build an effective uh, stories ad. Uh, he's even gonna do a demo uh, inside of a couple different pieces of software to show you how you can build an effective stories ad. And then he's gonna talk about how you can measure the success of that ad and figure out what the best follow-up should be. I should, uh, to put this in context, last week, Facebook announced that Instagram is creating new forms of advertising, new paths of advertising for small volume. Um, and so, oh, hey, uh, Grant, how are you? Grant, can you hear me? Um, Grant, are you there? Yes, sir, I'm here. All right. Well, let's talk to you first, and then we'll get into Geo. Uh, I had lost you there for a second. So could you can tell you hear me? me? Yeah, we can hear you perfectly. Mike, you guys got to go out. I can't hear. Him. So can you hear me, Grant? Yes, sir. OK. Hold on one second. OK. All right, can we hear me? Yes, we can. OK. So welcome. We're talk about. I, I did an introduction already, so let's just jump into it. Tell me about the work the community newspapers is doing in the small business community and what you're seeing right now in small businesses uh, in South Florida. Well, Miami Community Newspapers has been serving Dade County for over 50 years. We have 11 newspapers, but we have 44,000 
uh, Facebook friends and our newsletter, we have over 500,000. But it's the magic of the mix right now through this disaster. Now, most of us who's on online, we've all gone through a bunch of recessions. We've gone through 9-11. We've gone through a bunch of hurricanes. This is just a little bump in the road, uh, this disaster. But all business people, that most of these people are internet people, social media, everybody in Miami has to adapt, improvise, and overcome this issue. Can, are we there, Dan? Yeah, hearing you perfectly. Okay, good. It, of course, today is the day that all the computers go bad. But one we thing we learn through the media, you have to do a little of everything. You can't just do all Facebook, can't just do all Instagram, can't just do videos, can't just do newsprint. It's a pie. And everybody, you have to have the magic of the mix to make it work. And that's why all these people there, the hundred some odd people that are on here, need to know that. They need to know how to do the magic of the mix. And we do is if people are following us, we do about 11 videos a day, uh, a week. We do Facebook live. We do about 15 of them a week, not including zoom meetings. We also, then we put it out our newsletters. We put it on our Instagram. One of your former students, Aaron Guerrero is our digital marketing director. I call him our, my producer of our news shows. And we're very happy. Listen, everybody's going to take a dip, but be, keep people like you will keep everybody in business. Be positive and do a little of everything. Don't do too much of everything. Let everybody know. Not everybody's watching Instagram. Not everybody's reading newspapers. But in fact, because of the virus, more people are reading our newspaper than ever. In the last uh, eight weeks, we increased our online presence by 20,000 people. So business is, is going to thrive. So my motto is adapt, improvise, and overcome. I don't know if that's what you want me to talk about, Dan. Tell me about the devastation that you're seeing among some small businesses and the opportunity Aaron. you're seeing among others. Repeat that again, Dan. Tell me about the impact that you're seeing on small businesses, good and bad. Uh, small, bu <laughs> small businesses are taking a, a beating. But luckily, Dade County has come up with $25 million and they're going to help small businesses. But every small business doesn't know how to market. It, it is crazy, these small businesses. Some of them don't have newsletters. Some of them don't have email addresses. Some don't do Instagram. And this is what needs, to, we need to retrain everybody. Because years ago, you open, open a business, people show up. No, the market's too competitive. You know, we're helping the former Miami, uh, Miami, uh, what is it? A local Miami resident went to Palmetto High School. He's gonna be the first trillionaire. It's because of Amazon. He went to Palmetto. People, I don't know if you didn't know that. Did you know that? No, I didn't. Oh, you, yes. No, I did. Absolutely. One year. But we're going to make him a trillionaire because everybody's buying from Amazon. But small businesses need everybody's help. First of all, buy local, shop local. That's the most important thing. But we need to teach the small businesses. That's where we all come in. We have to teach them. Everybody that walks in their business, they need to get their email address. They need to sign them up on Instagram. I know there's a restaurant in Pinecrest. It's been around 25 years. He doesn't ask anybody for any information. Now he's taking, he's dying because he can't communicate with our, their clients. We can communicate with our clients every day. And a client to us is a reader and, a, and an advertiser. So we have two types. We're fighting for readers and we're fighting for advertisers, but small businesses are going to take a hack. They're going to get beaten up, but the strong will survive. And it, it, if a business goes out of business, somebody else will step right in. But this is why all you guys are going to be successful. You need to teach them digital marketing, including print. That's part of the business. Go ahead, Dan. My computer is now working. Oh, good. You know, my last question for you before we kind of move on to the formal presentation. And, you know, first of all, you know, I've been a journalist in this community for nearly 20 years. And I just want to salute you for the work and you and your brother and your family and Aaron and everybody are doing uh, and have done uh, for, um, you know, small businesses and for your readers for so many years. Um, how are you are yourself a small business? How are you doing right now? Well, I'm always leaning forward as I am right now. I'm always leaning forward, always moving forward. You know, business is tough. We lost, you know, 70, 80% of our business. But Hurricane Andrew, we lost 100% of our business. 9-11, the Miami-Dade County shut down. As Miami-Dade is 
when 9-11 hit, now the new new way of life is when you go to an airport, you go through all the customs. You make sure you're security. When you go to a football game or a baseball game, they check you out. The new way of life is you're going to have to wear a mask for a while. You're going to have to wash your hands a lot. We're, we're, all, ad we're all adjusting. We're all adjusting and we're moving forward. So we, we look we look for big things in all of our business. If you're in the marketing business, it's going to start thriving. You know, I, um, I really appreciate your part, you know, coming here and giving us a kind of snapshot of what you're seeing in the small business world. Can't thank you enough, you know, for the work you're doing. Um, give my best to Michael and to Aaron and, and everybody down, uh, down South where you guys are based. Hey, keep up the good work. Thank you. Thank you. You as well. Um, all right, so uh, I'm gonna uh, resume sharing my screen for a sec. You know, I've been thinking really hard, how do I like present uh, like one of my best friends and a guy who uh, helped me get BizHack off the ground. And uh, so I wanna do a quick uh, photo montage uh, geo by way of introduction. So uh, we went into the archives, Lilia Posos, thank you so much for pulling this together. Um, and uh, this is uh, what we called then Market Hack. It was our third cohort. And you can see uh, kind of to the right there, sort of hiding, because Gio does that sometimes, is Giovanni Insignares, who at that point I think was working at, uh, uh, had come from banking and had then started a small uh, digital agency, but was sort of transitioning into the field. Um, that uh, was the beginning, uh, as they say, of a beautiful friendship. Um, Giovanni um, is a, a gifted instructor, as all of you are going to experience. Um, he's an amazing um, uh, explainer of complex topics in simple language. He's also incredibly humble. This was a drawing that Bruce Turkel uh, made about uh, Geo talking about failure and how important a part of marketing that is. Um, <laughs> we've spent a lot of time together. Uh, I loved it when we went to a mixer and he brought a, uh, uh, his girlfriend and a dog. Uh, that was awesome. Ex-girlfriend. Uh, Ex um, Geo is incredibly well-dressed and well-groomed. Um, he has tight jeans that uh, cling around his ankles. Uh, he has shown me the importance of uh, bare ankles to high fashion. Um, and he is uh, always just sort of on and impeccably dressed and just an amazing um, character. We've done a lot of work with the arts and nonprofit community together. This is MAMP, the Miami Arts Marketing Project. And then um, when Gio uh, recently was hired after running many years of boutique agency, uh, to one of the nation's largest real estate developers, the Related Group, uh, to head up their digital marketing and really kind of create an in-house agency uh, and in-house in, in a lot of the work that they had been doing with outside agencies to staff. Uh, he um, had to step down uh, as our lead instructor um, and at that graduation, his last graduation as our lead instructor, uh, he was given the first ever certification uh, of certified master instructor of BizHack. And um, if I could um, get within six feet of you, Geo, this is what I would do right now. I would give you a bro hug and tell you, you know, thank you for all that you've done to make BizHack what it is today. Uh, we could not have gotten here without you. <laughs> that, that is quite an introduction. Thank you so much, Dan. And um, yeah, do not adjust your screen's settings. That's actually me blushing and turning that red right now after that. So uh, thank you. That was very, very nice and very, uh, yeah, I'm humbled. Um, guys, thank you so much for, for joining us today. Um, it's really cool to see some, uh, some former, some uh, fellow biz hackers on the, on the webinar and, and lots of uh, new faces, new names as well. So, um, you know, uh, look forward to, to getting to, uh, you know, know you guys and hopefully having you guys join the biz hack community. So let's, talk about um, Instagram stories ads. Um, and then quick question. So um, the questions will be coming in via chat, I imagine. Would you let me know when a question comes in? Yeah, I will manage the chat. Um, I'll stop you if I feel like it's required um, and I'll answer questions that are maybe a little off topic. So I'll handle that completely. Sounds like a plan. All right, so let me share my screen. All right, so let's discuss Instagram stories ads. <clears throat> Quick rundown of some of the topics we'll be discussing today. 
So we'll go over just the very basics. What is an Instagram story? Um, why you should, your business should advertise on Instagram. The difference the, between an organic and a paid post. Um, some examples of Instagram stories ads um, from, uh, from, from bad to great. Uh, some Instagram stories tools, some mobile apps, some desktop apps that I'll also do a demo of. And then I'll show you how to build an Instagram stories ads uh, step by step uh, through Facebook business manager. And uh, lastly, we'll talk about what's next in the Instagram ads space. So what's an Instagram story? Well, the Instagram stories are those circles that you see at the very top of your Instagram feed, right? So any page that you follow, any person that you follow, um, whenever they post an Instagram story, you're going to see that little thumbnail up top uh, with their profile picture up here, letting you know that, that they've uh, posted or published an Instagram story. An Instagram story is basically a full screen post. When you tap on that circle, it'll, the post will take over the uh, entire uh, screen. You'll see, and it'll last for about two seconds or so. And they automatically delete after 24 hours. So, um, you know, they're just quick instant stories that you can share with your followers. That'll, that'll then, you know, again, disappear after 24 hours have passed. So before we get into advertising on stories specifically, let's qu do a quick rundown as to why your business should be on Instagram. Since Instagram has over 1 billion people, users that use the application every month and about 500 million of those use the Instagram stories um, every day. So it's a really popular feature that continues to grow in popularity. Um, so it's, 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 uh, you know, it's very, very, you know, it's critical that, that your business have a presence there. Users on average, we spent about 28 minutes on the platform this year. And of those users, you know, we all, about 200 million users are spending, um, you know, are visiting at least one business profile a day. Um, you know, I can tell you, and I'm sure a lot of you shared similar experiences, especially now, uh, you know, during lockdown and quarantine, you know, the, um, Instagram was a great source of information uh, to kind of find out, you know, what businesses were still open, who was closed, if restaurants were doing delivery, takeout, etc. <clears throat> Your advertising reach on Instagram is potentially 849 million users. Um, and about one third of those users um, are, are viewing stories from businesses. So again, it's a growing channel, um, it, which you ha absolutely have to have a presence on um, because people are checking it every day. They're checking up on their friends, they're checking up um, on the businesses that they follow. Um, and then what I'm gonna show you today is how to make sure your ad, or how to make your ad appear while people are, are reviewing their stories. And lastly, about 75% of US businesses will use Instagram in 2020. So you want to make sure that, you know, so, so what that tells you is most of your, most, if not all of your competition is already using Instagram. So you absolutely need to have a presence there. And on average, businesses are posting about two and a half stories per week. So um, again, it's, it's important to not only have, you know, your regular posts on the newsfeed or on your page, but you also uh, need to increase. It's recommended that you increase your activity on the stories channel as well. So we're going to be talking today about paid posts. So I wanted to first briefly um, talk about and explain the difference between a regular organic post and a paid post. When we say organic, we're talking about just your sort of day-to-day -day posts, one that you can do, you know, from your phone, um, uh, you know, what, you know, your, your daily update, so to speak. A paid post is a much different thing. A paid post is used to target a specific audience. And I wanted to quickly show you how it is you can tell the difference between the two. So on the left, you have an organic post, right? These are the posts that we're used to seeing on our feed every day. And then to the right is a paid post. And notice the difference between the two. The first thing is that a paid post is labeled as sponsored. So you'll see the word sponsored under the, the profile name of that part for that particular post. And also paid posts all have a call to action button. So this one in particular says install now. 
um, but some may say shop now, some may say learn more, but the idea is for, um, you know, what the advertiser is trying to do is drive traffic from Instagram over to their website um, or maybe to a lead form, uh, but there's a desired action that they want their target audience to take, um, hence the, the placement of that call to action button there. <clears throat> so I wanted to run through some examples of Instagram stories, um, ads specifically, and these are ads that, that I pulled from, from my own Instagram account, um, ads that I was targeted for, and I wanted to share with you guys, you know, what ads I thought were awful, which ones I thought were a little bit better, and then the ones that I thought were great. So let's start off with awful. Um, so if I can pose a quick question to the audience, what do these two ads have in common? So someone said shirts, Andrea said shirts, uh, Susan said they're both clothing, Jonathan said they're both sponsored, clothing, shirts, clothing, they're retargeting uh, apps, uh, not tasty, no call to action. <laughs> All right, so not the responses I was looking for, but yes, you guys are, are, are all, you know, those are correct right there. They're definitely all shirts. Alicia uh, said, not story format. That's a great observation. That's a great observation. And I'll, I'll explain the, what, what we mean by that in a moment. Um, but the thing that sort of jumped out to me and what I wanted to highlight with these examples was notice how the ad copy gets cut off. See how it gets italicized and then there's a the more button? And here the same thing. So we saw the picture, great. We see the product, but there's no message being delivered to, uh, to the audience. Um, you know, the, the, there's too much, what this tells me is that this ad had too much text, too much to read, so much so that it had to get italicized and they had to put a hyperlink for more, um, which again, if you guys, um, you know, if you guys recall or understand the stories format is like, you have two seconds to read this. So you're not going to, you know, nobody, most people are not going to click on more and try to read all the text. You have two seconds to grab someone's attention. Next, I'm going to share a group of ads that I thought were a little bit better. Now this one was able to fit all of their text within the stories format. Um, but I thought that there was quite a, quite a, Quite a bit of information to try to digest in two seconds. Um, I thought that perhaps sharing a promo code um, was not the best use of this space when you're looking at it two seconds. Someone might click through it too fast and not get it. Um, but and the also the creative, the photo is not occupying the full sort of not the full space, all of the, the screen space that you have with the stories format. So these were a little bit better in that they had more text. Um, perhaps a little too much text and the images were square and not full screen. Next, I want to share the ones that I thought were great. And I'll pose, this, I'll pose another question to you guys. Why, what makes these ads better? What makes these great? Okay. Story format, bigger typography, uh, Marta, simple uh, call to action. That's what CTA means. Uh, Bree said straight to the point. Julie said offers. The call to action is clear, Amelia. Yeah. Uh, we like your feedback, Amelia. Susan said simple, nice coloring, minimal text. Marcelo said offer is right there. Joy said clean background, immediate yeah. call to action, and fast communication. Love it. Yep, yep. Yes to all of the above. You guys are getting the hang of it. Oh my God, 10 more responses. I love it. <laughs> oh, and then yeah. someone said the option to swipe up from Andrea. Yeah, great observation. So, so all all ads that are published on the stories um, in the stories uh, placement will have the swipe up feature. Um, so, so that is definitely one common denominator. All the stories will have, regardless of how you know it was created. You know, even the previous examples we just saw had it. Um, but I liked what everyone um, what everyone also said about quick, precise um, offer. The offers are in your face, really quick. You have two seconds to read this ad. So we're going to tell you what we're offering right up front. Um, um, also, concise call to action, swipe up, um, full screen, minimalist in some instances, which, which I thought was great. Um, 
uh, you know, again, get 12 weeks for $6. There's your offer. Save 50%. Get $50 off any two. One year for $10. So the offer is right up front. Um, so when I, you know, when I kind of think about the difference between these and these, you know, I think it would have been better for this particular group of ads to just talk about their 30% off sale. Hopefully that would have been enough to sort of catch my attention where I swipe up and then mention the promo code on the website itself. Um, so, you know, I am sure, you know, there's probably, a, there might be a promo code um, associated to the Lacoste sale, 50% off sale here, but they're not wasting valuable space trying to fill it in with a lot of text and tell you the promo code. They're just capturing your attention with the offer to kind of get you to, to, to swipe up. And then if there's a promo code, they can share that on the website. So yeah, great observations, you guys, right? Yeah. Right on, right you know, on point. Marcelo had a really interesting question. Um, you might not notice, guys, but you can see on the very bottom, there's like a little carrot in a white uh, circle that says uh, shop now or shop. Um, it, the action is to swipe up. Um, so all four ads have swipe up. Only one of them actually has the call to action in the text yeah. telling them to uh, swipe up. Marcelo's question was, um, is the swipe up obligatory? Can you run an ad that has a different um, physical motion than the swipe up? Great question. Um, in the case of stories, no, it has to be a swipe up because the way you kind of move forward, you progress in stories is by tapping, uh, tapping the screen. So as you tap the screen, you're going to move to the next story and onto the next and onto the next. So the, the, the physical motion in this instance has to be different from tapping. And so it has to be, and will always be a, a swipe up when it comes to this placement. A great question. Um, Marcelo um, asked, what type of, uh, does the type fall automatically on top of the picture or do you have to make the picture completely assembled? Yeah, great question. So there are different ways to construct the, um, you know, all of the creative that you can, that you can uh, use for this type of placement. Um, later on in the presentation, I'm gonna share some examples, some tools that you can use um, that'll format your ads for this specific vertical placement. Um, so we'll, we'll talk about that in a little bit. And um, we have a question from Alicia, but I'm going to get a little bit more information from her before I send it to you. So you can move on. All right. Sounds good. All right. So to piggyback off of Marcelo's question just now, let's talk about some Instagram stories tools. So there, there are countless tools in the market right now, you guys. So I, I highly encourage you. Um, to, to research a few of your own. If you do a quick Google search, you're gonna find countless articles, blog posts, all sorts of different stories. Um, so really here, I'm gonna share just a few of them with you, but there are so many more that are available. And I'll start with the native tool, the one that's native to um, the ads manager tool where you build and launch your, your Instagram and Facebook campaigns from. So over time, um, Facebook has started to develop their own sort of creative tools within the platform itself. Um, for a while, you know, you had to use third party tools. Um, but I think, you know, Facebook's trying to, um, you know, sort of, you know, be everything when it comes to creating your campaign. So they've recently launched a lot of native tools, which will help you uh, create the ads in the specific format for Instagram stories. Uh, so I'll show you guys an example of this when I do the demo momentarily. There are lots of mobile apps in the market as well that you can use to create stories, ads, and not just ads, you know, um, you know, this is creative. You can use for organic Instagram stories as well. Um, so these are, these are two, uh, two of the larger ones in the market, um, scene and Adobe spark. Um, you know, again, there are countless others, um, but, but these, these seem to have, uh, these are two of them uh, with some of the highest ratings on, on Apple's app store. Um, and then one that, that seemed to, and the two that seem to be, um, you know, sort of leading the, the market in, in, the, in this space for mobile apps. So there was a question about whether there's a cost for Scene or Adobe Spark? There are costs involved. So of course, they always kind of get you with the free version. Um, but and then it's for some of the more advanced features, um, you do have to pay, um, I believe in the case of Scene, it's an annual subscription, but don't quote me on that. And the same thing with Adobe Spark. Um, they each have a monthly or annual subscription that you can pay for. Um, but, you know, again, there are free versions for you to kind of play with it, test it out, see if it works for you. 
And if you like it, then you can pay for it to unlock some of the more advanced features. Um, uh, I believe, Adriana, yes, they're available for both uh, iOS and Android. Um, Amelia asked, is it important to include a hashtag? Uh, and another person asked, um, should you always include a call to action? And I think that this is a good moment just to remind people about the difference between an organic story post and an ad and what the purpose of an ad is. Absolutely. So to answer the first question regarding the hashtag, um, I wouldn't recommend it for a paid ad. I would recommend it more so for an organic post, right? So as part of your day-to-day -day post, um, either on your newsfeed or, or your story, um, you know, using the hashtag. Um, but I, I wouldn't include it in, in an ad. Um, I, you know, again, you have, you have very little time and, and, you know, lots of valuable space that you want to use to really, you know, put your offer up front and a call and a clear call to action. Um, so you don't want to make your reader read too much. I, I would reserve that more for an organic post. Um, and then the second question, Dan, could you repeat that again? Um, just, um, there was, I think, someone was asking, do you need to include a CTA, a call to action in an ad? And I think that that, frankly, represents a slightly fundamental misunderstanding of what you're actually trying to do with an ad. An ad is really about raising awareness and generating leads among a target audience. And so if you're spending money and you're not actually asking them to do something, you're at risk of wasting your advertising dollar. So part of the benefit of running ads is that you get people to take actions that bring them closer to a sale. And there's a related question from Sharon, which is do you need to have 10,000 followers to be able to add CTAs in stories? For organic posts, um, you do. So there is a verification process and an application process of sorts that you need to go through um, as a business uh, in order to get verified. So maybe you guys have noticed that on some, on some profiles that have a little blue check. That means that's a verified account. Um, uh, Facebook has uh, some pretty stringent, stringent criteria as to what, um, you know, what, what they require to make an account um, verified. I, you know, I don't know the specifics. Um, I do know from, from experience that, you know, you have to be a business that's generated a lot of press. Um, so if you get, if you apply and do get verified by Facebook, then whenever you do post a story, you will have that swipe up feature, um, for organic posts. In the case of paid ads, you will always, always have the swipe up feature. If you, if you run your ad through Instagram stories. So again, guys, just to make sure to remind you what we're talking about here. BizHack is all about how do you generate leads and sales through, for small businesses through Instagram, through Facebook, through digital marketing. And so what Geo is talking about is advertising using Instagram stories to get people to raise their hand and say, I want to do business with you. This is not... Uh, an organic approach. This is a targeted ad with a call to action. And for those of you, which is most of us who don't have 10,000 followers, by paying for an ad, you get access to the swipe up, which you wouldn't otherwise have. So that's one of the reasons it's so powerful to run ads, because it gives you additional tools to generate leads. Yeah, thanks for that. Yeah, great point, Dan. The last app I'm going to talk about, and this is the one I'll do a, a demo on a little later in the presentation, and then one that we teach in the course is Lumen5. Um, Lumen5 is, is really a, a, a one-stop shop, I think, in my opinion, uh, for, for creating content that you can uh, post across not only Instagram, but all social media uh, platforms. Um, so as you'll see in a moment when I do the presentation, they create um, the content for you already in the required media formats for those specific placements. So um, if you look at the example I'm showing here for Instagram, you know, look at, you know, you can see that there's four different um, uh, um, uh, formats that you can choose from depending where it is that you're gonna uh, not only run your ad, you can use this tool for, for organic posts as well. But I think the real advantage and what makes this, uh, you know, such a great tool is that it creates it in the required format for you already. And is, it's a breeze to use, as you'll see in a moment. 
Um, so before we get into the demo, um, Dan, is we think now would be a good time to stop and just ask if, let's see if there are any questions before we get into the demo? Just. Yeah, there are lots of, lots of questions. Um, so um, what about the music sticker? Is it also related to being verified? That's from Adriana Shaked. The, the new sticker? Music sticker? Uh, the music sticker. Um, I guess I'm not familiar with that either. If anybody on the chat knows the answer to Adriana's question, just weigh in. Susan Howe asked, how far out from an event do you suggest running a paid Instagram ad? From an event? Um, yeah, that's, that's uh, you know, I would say, you know, at least 30 days out. Um, yeah, I would say at the very least 30 days out because when, and, and this is just in general, whenever you're running a campaign, um, you know, it could take, it could take a little time for it to kind of gain momentum and gain traction. So you want to give yourself every opportunity to, to make sure to give the campaign an opportunity to, to really do its thing and get out to people with enough time before the, the event. So I, I would say at the very, very least, at least 30 days out. Yeah. Uh, I didn't even know events happened anymore. Just kidding. Um, uh, uh, thank you, uh, Jonathan, for weighing in about the um, music sticker. I really appreciate that. Um, I would like to actually take um, Alicia uh, Bitten off of mute. Alicia, can you unmute yourself? She had a really interesting question about using a app called the Retarget app to create automated retargeting audiences. This is a bit of an advanced question, but I figure since you wanted us to stop and just kind of before we do the demo, uh, Alicia, are you there? Yes. Hi. I'm. I'm sorry. I. I think the question was a little bit different than what you were explaining. Um, but basically my question was, I, I use ads that are kind of the right way to do them where I have them with the proper art, the proper amount of text and those I do separately. But I also use a few retargeting and remarketing apps um, that just what they do is they get the products that users have checked out on our website and they show it to them and put them in front of them through through Instagram stories, obviously in the wrong format, the first format that you showed that was like the ones we shouldn't do. So I have seen good results, by it, but I agree with you that it looks really bad, unprofessional, kind of takes away from our brand's branding to say it this way when they, when they see stories in this format. So is this something, a practice that you recommend or that you don't recommend? And I don't know if I explained myself. Yeah, yeah, no, no, you definitely did. Um, so you know, I can definitely appreciate the, the convenience that a lot of these, these third party apps provide. Um, you know, they definitely help automate a lot of things, but um, I, you know, I'm, I'm definitely much more of a purist. So I like to do everything related to the campaign um, right out of uh, the ads manager application itself so that I can be specific and, and really uh, carefully choose, you know, how my ad will be displayed. Um, because I think a lot of times, um, you know, I, I think with, with, nor, with newsfeed type of ads, I think apps like that can be very helpful, especially in the e-commerce space. Um, but when it comes to stories, I don't think they're quite there yet. So I would build them all complete, you know, right out of uh, the ads manager application as I'm about to show you. Okay, perfect. Thank you. Thanks for addressing the question. No problem. Great question. Um, all right. So uh, Gio, let's do this demo, man. This is, this is where he shines, guys, so enjoy. Oh, man, pressure's and, on. Um, right. I'll be sharing uh, uh, his presentation as well as a link to this live presentation because uh, demos are often best reviewed multiple times to get the most out of them. Sorry, I didn't mean to set you up there, but. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 all good, all good. So, um, all right, so, I mean, there, there, you know, you guys, this is a pretty robust topic, so I'm going to be, mo be moving kind of fast through this and just to really concentrate and, and dedicate the most time to the, the stories placement. So let's just say I'm going to uh, create an ad uh, designed to drive traffic to my website. So I'm gonna use the traffic objective here for my campaign. Um, I'm gonna sort of, I'm gonna 
Um, I'm going to skip through the audience targeting portion because, again, that's a pretty uh, robust topic as well. And I don't want to spend, uh, I want to devote as much time as possible to placement. So let's just say for this example's sake that I am targeting everyone in the United States between the ages of 18 through 65. So this is where we have to be very careful and very specific about our placements. You'll notice that by default, Facebook is putting automatic placements and they even go as far as to say it's recommended. That's because it's very, very convenient for them. Um, you know, they, there's very limited ad space inventory. So it's when you kind of leave them behind the wheel they're they're gonna place your ad um, wherever they deem it to perform best. But if you truly wanna have full control um, uh, of your campaign and where it's gonna be seen, then I would, I would select manual placements instead. So check out what happens when you select manual placements. What you see here is a list of all the potential placements that your ad could be seen. If you're not sure what one of these- We can see your, your screen. Oh, thank you so much. Let me- No one's being able to see it. Huh, thanks for calling that out. Well, I guess since I had it on the, uh, on the slides before, what I would do is stop sharing. Oh, there it is. We see it now. Cool. Thank you so much. Sorry for not catching that. No, no worries. No worries. All right. So let me just think, take one step back. You know, so this is ads manager. Let's say, you know, the objective of my campaign is to send traffic to my website. So I'm just going to select this option here. Let me just say really quickly. Um, you know, you guys are used to creating stories on your cell phones and just posting them. If you're going to run an ad with a story, you have to use this, this thing called ads manager, which is a completely different um, interface than what you might be used to. Yes, um, such a critical point. Um, thank you for, for uh, saying that, Dan. Um, yeah, yeah, when it comes to ad campaigns, you know, you always, always, always want to do it uh, from this app, from a desktop. Um, and, and, you know, although Facebook does offer a mobile app to run campaigns from, I don't recommend it. You'll get, you know, just a shred of its capabilities versus um, the desktop app. So, yeah, um, so always, always, always launch and run any paid advertising campaign from here. All right. So. Again, let's just say that I am going to run the campaign to the, you know, everyone in the United States between the ages of 18 to 65. Um, so here is where you choose your placements. And what I was saying a moment ago, so these are, this is where your ad is going to be seen. By default, Facebook leaves it on automatic placements. Um, even though it says recommended there, if you're going to run an, a campaign that's going to run exclusively on stories, you have to change, change that and select manual placements. And, you know, it's a pretty extensive list of places your ad can be seen. You kind of look through all of these options that you have. And if you're not sure what some of these placements mean, you just move your cursor over it and then you'll kind of get a preview on the right hand side as to where this is. But, you know, let's say, you know, since we're talking about Instagram stories, I don't want it to run on Facebook. I don't want it to run on audience network either. Notice how I'm just removing the check off of those options. I don't want it to run on Messenger. So right now my ad is only going to run on Instagram. However, here. So now we're gonna talk about Insta Instagram stories. So notice that stories is its own category, but I also don't want it to, and news feeds is its own category. So if it's going to run only on stories, then you need to make sure to remove the option for the Instagram feed, the option for Instagram Explorer, and only leave the option for Instagram stories. So that way, that is the only place my ads will run, which means my, the media format for my content needs to meet the Instagram stories requirements. All right, so let's just click continue and go into how to build the actual Instagram stories ad. All right, so let me show you, you might recall, you know, a moment ago, I was talking about some of the features that, that Facebook is offering, some of the native features. 
Can you guys see the slide deck that I just brought up? Dan, could you see that? Could you see PowerPoint? Yes, we can. Cool. So remember when I was talking about this a moment ago? Some of the, some of the native tools? Yeah. Well, that's what I'm about to show you guys next is the tools that are within the ads manager application itself to create a campaign with. So let's say I'm going to create video. So here are some of their, the templates that, that Facebook has to offer for you to create ads with. And if you notice in the top right hand corner, they have the different formats. So by default, it goes to square, but we're going to run stories. So we want vertical. And, you know, there are quite a few different types of templates that you can choose from, um, you know, for the sake of time, you know, we cannot go through each one of them here, but what I will say is notice, you know, the description right under the name of that template, because it'll tell you how many images you can include in that story. So an ad is not limited to just one picture, right? It could be a series or a sequence of pictures up to six, as you can see here. So if, you know, so that, you know, so if you have multiple products, you want to um, advertise on, you know, in your campaign, you know, you can do so and just dedicate one image uh, per product. And that way, as people are tapping through it, they can see, you know, more than one, you know, they can see several of your products or services before they decide to swipe up. So we'll select, let's select the zoom option. All right, so I selected it and now I need to add images. So I'm going to click on this blue button on the left hand side. And what, what Facebook is going to show is, you know, whatever pictures you have saved to your account, notice where it says account images, it's going to show you the entire library there. Um, but these are by account images, I mean those that have been used in, in ad campaigns before. If you have some photos on your organic Instagram page um, or Facebook page, you can go to page images and then kind of go through the library of photos that you have there. So as you can see, it's a lot more extensive, which makes total sense because, you know, most people, you know, they post several times a week and you can just kind of choose, you know, whatever it is you're going to use for your campaign. So let me just kind of choose a few things at random here. Um, so we'll select, uh, you know, we'll select, you know, one, two, and notice that you can select more than one and notice, and at the bottom here, it's going to start adding all the, the images that you select. All right. So let's say I'm going to use four images for my campaign. I'll click continue. There we go. So, the, the trick with this is, you know, what it's, what this is not going to do is resize the original photo for you, right? It's going to take it and place it in the vertical format, um, you know, to the best of its abilities. Um, but you know, it may not necessarily still not be the best, um, display or the best way to show that photo. So, you know, in some instances you may just have to sort of resize the photo. Uh, to, to, to meet the, the vertical format. But I mean, as you kind of start to scroll through these, you know, it's not, it doesn't do a bad job. And then I'll select customize. And now I'll have, here we go. So let's say, you know, this one, let's say I want to crop this image, you know, you can crop it here to try to, you know, find another focal point in the ad in the image. So maybe I, I want to slide this a little bit to the left so that the second person appears in the ad there. And, you know, I'm, I'm happier with this. So you can, you know, you can modify it a little bit before you decide to, to publish it. And then, you know, once I'm happy, with, uh, with the way they came out, then I can select use video. And now it's going to create that video for me. 
Dan, I saw the, the chat looks kind of active. Um, any questions that come in? No, I'm handling it. Um, cool. I, I think um, what uh, you're leading towards is that Facebook has inside of it uh, a pretty good uh, media creation set, set up so that you can create videos, even Instagram stories inside of Ads Manager. Um, and then I do wanna make sure we have time since we are at 1.30. Uh, we have a really great tool that BizHack particularly likes. It's a third party tool, but it does a better job and an easier job of creating videos uh, and story ads videos. So I wanna make sure we have time for that. Yeah, so let me just hop right to that. So the tool that Dan's talking about is called Lumen5. Um, and let me quickly show, let me show you guys just how quick and fast it, you can create a video. So let me click on create video here in the top right hand corner. Um, let me skip this. So I'm going to click skip again here in the top right hand corner. And here, you'll see all the different formats that you can choose from, right? So there's, you know, if you want to create content for Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, Snapchat, YouTube, etc., you know, it'll automatically create it for you in the required media format. Um, but since we're talking about Instagram stories today, I'm going to select a story, but notice the difference between the two. One is for IGTV, which we'll talk about a little bit later. So that's not the one you want to choose. What you want to work with is the stories uh, format. Um, they have some, some, uh, templates that were, you know, that are sort of created for you in certain themes already. So let me just quickly choose the, the modern format. And what makes this great, this application really great is I'm going to select media here. They have a pretty large library of, of, uh, royalty free images that you can use for your ad. So if I want to run an ad with some cats in it, you know, I do a search for cat and, you know, you'll find countless videos and images that you can use for free for your ad. Um, but if you have some specific imagery that you want to use for your campaigns, then you can upload your own photos, um, upload them here to your own photo bank. And then once you've done that, it becomes as easy as picking an image and just clicking and dragging it over. And then notice that it has some text that you can use as well. Um, and you know, you can crop and format this, this photo as well, if you wanted to. Um, so, you know, if I wanted to crop it because that's not the best one, move it a little bit more here. And then you can add some text overlay to this, which is critical as we saw with those ads that we really liked, you know, they had a, a quick, concise call to action. Um, so, you know, let's say, you know, this is, this is uh, an apartment building. So let's say, you know, we're advertising a, a leasing special right now, one month free. For just, you know, as an example's sake. So that text will display and notice what else it does. It adds music, it adds motion. It gives like a camera sort of panning effect to the image. If I wanted to add um, another scene, I can do so by clicking on the plus sign, you know, finding another image, clicking and dragging, and you repeat the process as many times as you want to. Um, so let me see, I'll do a three, three image stories ad here for this example. So let's say I'm, you know, these are the three images I want to use. I'm happy with it. I want to preview what my video looks like. I'll click on preview. And this is how the ad will display on stories. And admittedly, that wasn't the best example because I'm, you know, I couldn't uh, really tweak it as much as I'd like to just for the sake of time. But I think you guys get the general idea. It took me less than five minutes to create an Instagram stories ad. You know, I had photos that I uploaded and I just, you know, I clicked and dragged it over. You have the ability, the ability to add some text overlay so that your ads have that clear, concise uh, call to action, or you can display your offer really quick. Um, and, you know, it's just a really, really, um, uh, you know, simple and, and 
and really fun app to use and, and one that we always teach in the class because, you know, again, it really, it, it does the heavy lifting for you. You know, you'll have, uh, you know, the, the content will be created in the required format um, for whatever placement it is that you're going to run your campaign in. Um, but, you know, as you can see here for Instagram stories, you know, we've got the, the vertical format and we can add text and everything like we saw in some of the examples uh, at the beginning of the presentation. All right, Gio, got lots of good questions. Sure. Um, Elsie asked, for an ad in story, do you recommend video more than static pictures? That's a great question. So I don't, um, you know, the, they're both, I think they're both great format types. Um, I would say with, if your video, if you're going to be able, if you're going to use video, it's because your video is going to be able to deliver the message in the two seconds that you have in the stories format. Um, if not, then I would consider using a sequence of images like we're building here. Um, I think that might, that might fare a little better than, than a video because people are going to be moving through it pretty fast. And also, um, video consumption, most of the time video is consumed with, uh, uh on mute. So, you know, another thing to consider is unless your video has some captions, which might be too much to read in the two seconds that your story is going to be shown, um, it may not work. So a video uh, may work a little bit better, you know, may work slightly better on newsfeed versus the stories format. Yeah, we've definitely found that video is critical for ads that are going to appear in other placements. Um, but with the stories placement, um, a static photo in motion can probably work just as well. Um, we had two questions that were very similar when to use a story versus a post. That's both from uh, Luis and Amelia. Uh, Amelia's at, question was a refinement of that. Is it a good strategy to share your posts as stories? Is it a good strategy to share your posts as stories? So um, Luis asked, when do you use a story versus using a post? Oh yeah, great question. So, um, so if there's, so remember that Instagram stories disappear after 24 hours. So if there's a message that your business is trying to convey that you want to create a lot of awareness for, then I would definitely consider using a post so that it's visible to anyone that visits your profile and it won't go anywhere. It's going to always stay in your, as part of your feed. Um, you may, um, but you know, if there's some, a quick sort of concise, um, uh, message that you want to use, you know, just some, some quick tidbits, uh, stories might be a better, better suited for that. Um, but, but not to say, you know, let's say you have an event, you definitely want to announce that event on your feed as a regular post, but leading up to the event, you definitely want to sprinkle in some Instagram stories, just kind of reminding your followers that you have an event coming up. Um, but, but just, you know, always keeping in mind that whatever you publish on stories, um, has a shelf life of 24 hours. After that, the message is gone forever. Um, you know, a lot of questions kind of related to stories versus posts. It's a little bit beyond the scope of what we're going to cover here today. It's very Googleable. There's a lot of great advice on the internet about that. Um, Michael Pace asked, does Lumen5 allow you to upload your own brand fonts? You know the answer to that? Um, I don't know the answer to that. No, I don't. I don't, unfortunately. Yeah. Um, we also had a, uh, a question uh, or a request from Andrea. Uh, if anyone knew of companies that do a good job with stories or with story ads, um, uh, Rhonda is asking how the pricing works. Um, well, there's pricing for Lumen 5 and then there's pricing for running ads. So Rhonda, if you want to make clear what you're asking there. Um, how can I target the ad to someone that uses a specific word on their cell phone, for example, in a conversation in WhatsApp? That's a question from Daniela. And then she said, I'm sure they listen to us. Is that something in our control? Uh, okay. So, so I, I, don't, I don't think, you know, no, not a specific word. So the, the, the targeting capabilities that we have uh, revolve around interests and, and, and different, um, uh, um, online behaviors. So while we can target people who recently used a specific word in a recent conversation on WhatsApp, if you know what your target audience's interests are, then you can target them based on that interest. So 
if I'm a yoga studio, for example, I can target people that have an interest in yoga, people who might have an interest in uh, Lululemon, which is a pretty popular, uh, you know, yogi clothing brand, you know, things like that, but not specifically um, people who have used a recent uh, word in a conversation. At least I hope not. Uh, now, we're going to wrap up the Q&A with one more question from Ava, and I think it's a great one. You know, Giovanni is a specialist in real estate. He works for the Related Group. So uh, Ava asked, for real estate, have you found that it works uh, for rentals and for pre-construction or any thoughts on that? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So, you know, as it pertains to real estate, you know, at, at least the approach um, that, that we take um, at, at work is, you know, we, we want to have a, a presence everywhere, right? So um, a lot of times, you know, we, we, we may want to show, for example, in stories, just um, amenities, right? So we want to show we have lots of amenities and we know people are going to move to those pretty fast versus maybe, um, sh you know, uh, uh, displaying a, a one of our units. That's something that we want people to take their time to really look through and explore. So that we might show, uh, that might be better suited as a regular post where people can kind of take their time. Maybe we posted a video on the feed where they can explore and then tour the uh, one of our model units. Um, but on stories, you know, since it's quick and fast, you know, we may just want to quickly show them all these great amenities that we have at one of the buildings because it's just going to be a little quicker to digest. But I would say, yes, they're, they're, all, they're all effective. They're, they're all effective, absolutely. I mean, um, you know, provided, of course, you're targeting the right audience, um, you know, you can definitely get, you know, run a pretty effective campaign on, on either of those placements. Perfect. Gio, take us home. All right. Um, so what's next for Instagram stories ads? Um, is everybody seeing PowerPoint, Dan? Yeah. Yes, we okay. are. All right. So maybe you guys have noticed some of the, uh, one of Instagram's fairly new features called Instagram TV. So if you've visited a, uh, a business profile recently, you may have noticed this icon that looks like a TV with a little squiggly line in the middle. Um, so that is Instagram TV and, and it's sort of their answer to YouTube, right? Um, and what that is, it's a section on a business profile where people can view longer form video content. Um, your posts on your feed can support video that's up to one minute in length. Anything that runs over one minute um, should be posted on Instagram TV so that people can watch, um, you know, can consume all of that content there if it's going to run longer than one minute. Um, and one of the, new, the newest placements that they're offering is within Instagram TV. So let's take this profile, for example. So if I tap on that little TV there in the middle, it's going to bring me to their Instagram TV channel, which is this first um, um, screenshot you see in the far left. Um, so let's say I'm interested, you know, I'll tap on one of these tiles for whichever video I want to watch. The video starts. And then what's going to happen is as mid roll video. So in the middle of my video, it might pause for 15 seconds to run a quick ad, um, up to 15 seconds long and then stop. And then the, the video that I was watching will continue to play. So this is a fairly new format that Instagram has just started to test with Instagram TV. And what they're trying to do is they're, they're really trying to compete with YouTube and they're trying to encourage people, um, to become Instagram TV creators. Um, and by doing so, they're, they're all, you know, they're incentivizing them to create more content, more long form content for Instagram TV. Um, and in the process, get a share of the ad revenue. So if you are a, a popular content creator on YouTube and you're driving lots of views, YouTube right now is paying you 55% of all the ad revenue that they generate. So Instagram TV is going to try to uh, match them on that to try to, you know, get some more creators on Instagram TV and try to get some, you know, perhaps some of the YouTube uh, content creators to come over to Instagram instead. So it'll be really interesting to see how this plays out. If you want to learn more about that, I included the link at the bottom of the presentation. So um, when Dan shares the presentation with you guys, just, uh, you know, just follow that link to read more about this new feature. Perfect. Well, we had our Q&A. Thank you so much, Gio. Um, uh, you know, any final words you want to say just before we um, kind of close? 
Can I reveal the big surprise? <laughs> oh, the big surprise. Yeah, I mean, guys, thank you. Thank you all you know, so much for your time. Um, I sincerely hope you all learned something new. My contact information is there. Um, I, you know, I mean it when I say that I, I love talking about this stuff and any reason, any opportunity I get to talk about it, uh, I jump on. So there's my contact info. You know, feel free to reach out and uh, you know, I'll be glad to, to talk about any of these topics a little further. Well, um, Gio, I, I'm so grateful to you for, in so many ways and certainly for sharing your expertise and your knowledge and your uh, great teaching uh, with groups here. We had a, a fabulous uh, showing today. Thank you all for coming. Um, if you guys are interested in tasting what BizHack is all about, you just got it. Um, this kind of mix of really practical, plain spoken advice with demos that show you how to actually execute uh, inside of the platform. You'll get another taste of it next week when I do the five pillars of digital success. It's a 90 minute session uh, giving to you guys free to the community. Please come, please bring friends. It's normally a $150 session. We also have our graduation celebration where you can see small businesses that have run through our five week program and the kind of results that they're getting. And then finally, the big announcement, which is uh, I'm happy to announce that we've just gotten some scholarship funds available for our five week program starting June 23rd. Um, and so I wanted to let you know uh, that uh, we know that we're in a tough time. BizHack has been applying for grants and support uh, to help those businesses that know they need better digital marketing, but they just can't afford right now during this tough time for it. If you're interested in learning more about our scholarships and whether you qualify, because we are, we have limited scholarship funds, there are partial scholarships to defray a portion of the cost of the course, uh, and there are some qualifications that we would need to do in an application interview. Just go to apply.bizhack.com and we'll set up an application interview and see whether or not uh, there might be some scholarship funds available for you. Uh, really appreciate you guys and everything that you're doing to support uh, our local community uh, and help get us um, back, to, back on our feet as an economy and as a community. Uh, and uh, I hope that for some of you, uh, this course could be uh, a way to help you accelerate your reopening and, uh, and help us fulfill our mission to help small businesses grow through digital marketing. Um, so with that, I look forward to receiving your applications. I look forward to seeing you guys in a week for our special 90 minute uh, session on the five pillars of digital marketing for small businesses. And thank you guys so much. Really appreciate it. Bye guys, thank you. Thanks guys. We'll be sending a recap uh, of this uh, session um, on Monday and we're gonna be sending a follow-up email with a little bit more information about the scholarship and a live stream of today's session. Uh, thank you to Grant uh, for coming and joining us. And I also wanted to give a special acknowledgement to Rosemary Ravenal. Uh, Rosemary is uh, someone who has helped me re uh, orient the background and the setting uh, of my Zoom presentations. She said, Dan, there's an opportunity for you to do a little better. Uh, so thank you, Rosemary, uh, for your help with that. Uh, you've been amazing. Um, Rosemary, you want to um, come off mute for a sec, uh, just while, as we say goodbye? Okay. Hi there. I wasn't ready for, uh, for video. Thank you for the uh, for the plug, I uh, commend you on the uh, presence. Uh, you have a very professional looking set and I know there's a few tweaks to come and I think you might be ready to unveil those next week. Yep. So thank you for a great session, everybody. These are extraordinarily worthwhile. Uh, pleasure to be part of this. Thank you, Rosemary, for the time that you gave. She had an amazing presentation a few weeks back. If you go to our YouTube channel, you can catch up on that. And Rosemary, you know, works on executive coaching and executive um, uh, presentations and uh, is developing, she has a background from Univision and is developing a, a little bit of a sub-specialization in how to make us not look terrible uh, on Zoom. 
So thank you uh, for the help. Uh, I really appreciate you. My pleasure. And I had offered, after I did my presentation on crisis communication, a free consultation to anyone involved with the BizHack community. So that offer is extended anew. So uh, if you can share my contact information with everybody, it'd be my pleasure to talk with each and every one of you on your Zoom presence or something else. Rosemary, what's your email address? It's rosemary, one word, at rosemaryravenel.com with a V. R-A-V-I-N-A-L dot com. All right, I put it in the chat for everybody. Um, I'll leave it uh, up for a second here. Thank you again, uh, Rosemary and everybody else for joining us today. Thanks, Lilia, for pulling those great photos of Gio. You did a great job with that. That was awesome. Uh, nice little surprise for him. Uh, and take care, everybody. Have a great um, rest of your week. Stay safe out there. Um, and, uh, and we'll talk to you soon. We'll see you in a week. Bye.